A story revolving around a young Parisian nana played by Anna Karina talks about her life, her struggles with poverty and unstable marriage, the disappointment when hopes are unable to be reality causes her to turn to prostitution just to survive and make ends meet. But along the way, she meets a man who shows her endless care and compassion and that hope still exists. But within her line of work, Nana is met with conflict brewing in her life when a pimp named Raoul, played by Sandy Ribot, has his final say and decision. The film Viva Sa Vie, or My Life to Live 1962, is a drama directed by the pioneer of the French New Wave, Jean-Luc Godard, and it was one of the many films that kick-started the movement. The French New Wave, or La Nouvelle Vague, was founded by a group of film enthusiasts who had aspirations but not the money. It consisted of François Tuffaut, Jean-Luc Godard, Claude Chabrol, and Jacques Rivette. They were the faces of this era and were later known as the auteurs. An auteur, also known as an artist who heavily influenced the films through the styles and uniqueness they represent as a director, is what made French New Wave hip and modern for the era they were in. More precisely, the 1950s and 60s. It was one of the most influential in cinema history. It can be seen that today, elements of the French New Wave are still found in movies we know and love. They shape the way movies are now made and are also the major influence of many directors such as Tarantino and Scorsese. The French New Wave represented life in France during the era. It also represented what a director's life was like and also what their beliefs and philosophy was. The French New Wave did not only not follow the way movies were made traditionally during the time, but instead wanted to find alternatives and substitutes for pre-existing formats and also wanted the movies to be personalized. What separates the French New Wave from the rest of the films in the era were the characteristics, such as the form and style, direct cinema, thematic affinity, and open-ended narratives, and also the fact that they ultimately decided that there was no need for them to follow the rule book. Most French New Wave films include the use of jump cuts, shooting on location, handheld cameras, long takes, improvisation, and also breaking the fourth wall between the actors and the audience and many other things too that make the French New Wave the way it is. Diving into the characteristics, let's take a look at the setting. French New Wave films are often shot on location, which is a subsection of form and style. In Viva Sa Vie, in every chapter and shot as an audience, you are able to witness how the French live their life and the way they dress and also the landmarks and beautiful locations France has to offer. The scenes from the cafe were filmed at Rallier Villiers in Le Viola and the scenes in the record shop which is located at 25 Avenue de Vagram 75017. The reason why they had to shoot on location was due to the budgets, but that's what made films in the French New Wave different from the others as many were shot in backlot studios at the time, and the fact that they also had major budgets. It is also what makes shooting on location part of another aspect of what makes French New Wave the way it is, known as direct cinema. It shows the reflection of life. Even though they are actors, it showed people in everyday situations with authentic dialogues, naturalness, and for instance, it can be found in the scenes within the cafe and the record shop. Focusing on the editing aspect of French New Wave films, it can be seen that the use of jump cuts, long shots, framing, and emphasis were what made French New Wave different and modern for the time. Look at the use of long shots in Viva Sa Vie. It can be seen that there were lots of shots that used pan to tell the story and also draw attention to certain locations and actors. Another is that certain scenes, for instance Nana walking and talking to a friend or even waiting for a client, are seemingly long shots and are unedited. When looking at jump cuts, an instant of jump cuts is the shooting scene. You can see that instead of your typical pan to where the source of the noise is, jump cuts were used to substitute for pans and the cuts followed the sound of the machine gun shots to move to where the source of the sound is. Looking at the framing and emphasis aspect of editing a zoom toward a singular character or singular shot, focus on the actor in the moment and blocks out everything surrounding it, causing people to draw their focus on the actor and nothing else. Lastly is when actors address the audiences, better known as breaking the fourth wall. It can be seen in several scenes in the film that Nana makes direct eye contact with the camera, which in a way acknowledges the audience and sorts of holds a conversation with them. 
Personally, I enjoyed the film very much, even though I had times of struggle trying to understand certain aspects of the film. I feel that the film and the style has a sense of je ne sais quoi, a quality that cannot be described. It is definitely a film in which I would recommend to people who love exploring new genres and enjoy watching romance stories. I would also recommend people to rewatch the film a few times to understand it properly, but overall, it is a very good and interesting film.